Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Caleb Gordon podcast. I'm Caleb Gordon, your host. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be a part of the program. Uh, the idea of this podcast is to, to look at things that inspire, to look at leadership, to look at things that have intentionality. I'm excited for our guest today. We're going to sit down and we're going to have a conversation with my friend, Chad Higgins. I, Chad and I go back for goodness gracious, years and years and years. Um, Back to when he was youth pastoring here in Oklahoma. He's now the senior manager of church equipping at Lifeway. And my hope is the conversation would just pull us into the reality of advancing the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ, advancing the cause of the mission of the gospel, and to see men and women's lives transformed and changed. So I pray that this conversation encourages you and challenges you this week. Love y'all. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Chag Higgins. How in the world are you doing, my friend? Dude, I'm doing really, really well. How are you? How's my life? Goodness, it has been a hot minute. So what people don't know is you and I used to go to a coffee shop yeah. like a couple times a month, and we just go sit and talk and hang out. And this is what this podcast I hope is going to feel like. Yeah. It's just you and I sitting together talking about life. Um, how are things going? It's going really, really well. And I, you know, not just the podcast, but I think that uh, that art of just sitting and talking Come on. is so good, right? Yeah. Like it is, it is so needed, not only for ministers, but just leaders in general. Um, every, every good leader I've ever met is someone that uh, is often curious and often willing to uh, sit and hash and talk good, bad, ugly, all those conversations, are, I think are pretty, pretty important. So yeah, brother. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I love that. So, um, okay. What, what do you, what are you doing these days? So I, I, and you back, so people, I, t- I put an intro to this thing and you used to be a youth pastor here in Oklahoma mm-hmm. and you did that for years. And that was, that was your, your yeah. shtick, I guess you could say, is it was your sure. thing. And now um, you have moved into some, some, you're still doing ministry, but you're doing it in a little bit different role. Yeah. Very. Uh, what, what, are we, what are you doing? Yeah. So um, I am the senior manager of church equipping for Lifelike Christian Resources. Oh, wow. Okay. So explain what, 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 what is that? What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> Um, so, so Lifeway is, uh, you know, an entity of the SBC, sure. uh, and, and for us, there is very much a ministry component, right? Yeah. We create resources and experiences that, that power ministry, um, our, our goal and our desire is not to try to do our own thing, but to, um, minister in a way that supports the work in the local church. And so part of that and what our team gets to do um, is it is made up of some incredible um, leaders in their own fields, specifically whether that's children's ministry, student ministry, adult discipleship, even senior pastor. Um, And so we have specialists in each of those areas. Um, Many of them have been practitioners for years and years. Um, And our goal is to create um, training, whether that's online or in person, um, to come alongside our like state partners uh, and churches to to just do ministry better and more thoughtful. Um, And so that that has multiple elements to it. We do everything from kind of that like care of pastors Mm -hmm. down to the like you know, hey, here's some of the research that we've been doing at the, you know, level of what does discipleship actually look like right, right. Uh, in, inside of our churches or what does parent ministry look like inside of our churches? And and so we've got, you know, a whole research team that that does some incredible research to find the answers to some of that, because I think it's really important to know each of our individual contexts. And so having a larger kind of national scope of what's happening can often help us understand maybe not necessarily where our individual church is at, but mm. 
the dangers of where it could go or hopefully the encouragement of where it could go, right? Depending on the research or the finding or all those kind of things. So fantastic. Yeah. That's I mean that 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 is a that's a big that's a lot on the plate there. Um so it, what what are you what are you seeing in your in your your research and in, in your your new role here? What are you seeing that that is most impacting um, the local church? That is that's a huge question, um, and and there's so many different elements. What what I would say before we like just dive into like a big like national conversation, right? It is I because I think sometimes sometimes we can become so blind to the national conversation, right? That we almost get out of it uh, out of touch with what's happening uh, in our local environment, right? Right. Because, so you're I so mean, focused on the big the big national right. pictures that you forget that there's this this church of individuals that you're dealing with yeah. personally. Yeah, 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 no doubt. So well, because for you, right? I mean, you're you're a pastor yourself. Like, yeah. you know, it could be so easy to want to jump on a bandwagon of oh, man, whatever yeah. the whatever the hot button issue is in California, right, you know? And, right. That, that it's like that, you know, that becomes the little soapbox. And and those are really important things to sure. know about because, you know, it, it, it's, it's knowing research is a little bit, I think, like knowing history, right? Like if you, right. if you yeah, don't yeah. know it, you're going to be, you, you'll you repeat it or you'll fall into it. Um, but, but I would say that continuing to encourage pastors and leaders mm. to understand a bigger perspective but then to also be like researchers or 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 people that know their own context really well, right? Yeah, because know your audience, know know the the 100%. room you're in, because uh, the things that are happening in California aren't happening in Oklahoma or Kansas, uh, to, to some degree. I mean, they might be in certain pockets, right? But yeah, but sometimes I think it can just get us off of the of the mission of advancing the gospel. We can be 100%. so focused on whatever the stuff is that's happening in the moment right. um, on, on the national headlines that we were, that we forget that there's a group of students or there's a group of parents that have these, these real life issues that need to be dealt with and, and can be changed in real time by you as a pastor sitting down, having coffee, sitting down, having conversations with them to, to be, uh, or, or to, to, uh, to change the circumstances right. right then and there. Right. Well, because you think about it, right. The, the people that are sitting in your pews or sitting across the coffee shop table, um, with you, like, yeah, they may be concerned about some like, you know, gender issue. Right. But in reality for that actual family, the big hindrance is probably much more that like their teenager won't get off their phone. Oh, my you know goodness, what I mean? Yes. Right. Or even mom and dad's caught up in that, or there's, you know, tension between mom and dad inside the house and mm -hmm. those kind of things. And I think sometimes the national distraction be can become the the thing that we all want to point out because then we don't really have to deal with what's happening in turn right now does that mean the national distraction doesn't uh, sometimes hit home close to home and we need sure can that? absolutely right? yeah yeah um and, and i think that that's why it's important to be knowledgeable of those things uh, i think one of the things that's continue to be true though as we look around and 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 we have conversations one of the things that i think uh needs to be talked about more is I think we've gotten really comfortable at using words that I think everybody thinks that we're all on the same page and everybody has different definitions. Well, yes. Specifically yep. things like the gospel or discipleship, right? Um, and so like, you know, a pastor may get up and say, hey, you know, we we are about discipling, you know, folks, and that's what we are going to be about. And, and right. we're going to be, you know, intentional about all that. And, and everybody we've, you know, we heard the word disciple and that sounds awesome. And, and we're here for it. That's and what I want to do. Right. That, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And amen. Rah, rah. And, 
Exactly. And, <laughs> and, and, and we've gotten to the point where no one's really not, I didn't, excuse me. I don't ever want to say no one. I think the vast majority are not articulating and um, giving clear understanding Amen. of of what we're really asking. And I, I would agree with that a hundred percent. I would agree, agree with that one hundred percent. And and there needs to be a clear definition. Like that was one of the things that I was as a pastor. One of the first things I did. I was sitting in a Sunday school setting. I was like, "Tell me what the gospel is," because I want us sure. to under, help us understand what that is. And people, they were like. It's in the Bible, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so I had to had to deconstruct some stuff to reconstruct it in sure. a biblical light, right? And so, yeah, to to do that properly, I think, yeah, we have to understand the definitions of words that we've used for generations. Um, right. I, I think that that needs to change. So what? That's man, a hundred percent, so helpful. Yeah, and some of that, some of that finding, you know, we've been doing some research specifically on like parent ministry and, and ministry at home. And, mm -hmm. and for a long time, like, you know, churches have been telling parents, you know, you're the primary discipler of your teenager or your kids. And I'm a hundred percent on board with that. And I believe yep. that that is very true. And statistics would show us that, you know, parents, parents that are in the word and, and praying regularly, their kids over 80% more likely to be an adult that is in the wow. world and praying um, when when they uh, graduate. Now that those statistics don't always come about when sure. kids in the house, sure. right? Always because, always going to have the the weird yeah, things happen, right? Right. Well, and your many kids are they're trying to figure out who they are. Thank the Lord, you and I are not the same people we were when we were sixteen oh, years old. You goodness. know what I mean? Um, I remember being the kid in the youth group, <laughs> right? Well, and, and I know, I mean, I remember your father had such a great legacy. I'm sure yeah. that that yep. had a huge impact on your own faith specifically. And, and we look back at our parents. I, I know I see my parents in such more positive light than yes. when I was a, you know, a dumb 14 year old kid, right? because you start to realize, oh, like mom and dad knew what they were talking about. Yeah. And the same, same is true about faith. Like, you can think back of, you know, our own parents, even questions that you didn't ask them, you in your mind could probably think through, okay, well, this is what I think my parents would have said, or, yep. you know what I mean? Just because we yep. know what they value and who they were. And, and that seems true for us when it comes to raising our kids. And so modeling that, living that out. And so anyways, back to the discipleship aspect of it, you know, for us telling parents, you know, you're the primary discipler of your kid, for the vast majority of, of parents, we parent the way that we ourselves, in, in some way, we're parented, we're parented. ourselves. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we want to try to do it, quote unquote, better. Better, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but for the most part, it, it's what's been modeled for us. 100%. And so when, when we turn to parents and pews and we say, you're the discipler of your teenager, well, then what does that mean for most of them that, that grew up, you know, our age, a little bit older, the goal was just to get kids to church. Yeah. And, and so um, a lot of times that's kind of what it looks like. And so if you ask a lot of parents, you know, are, are you doing it? I think most of them will shake their head of going, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm trying, I want to get better at it, those kind of things. Uh, but really being able to identify like, okay, here's what I need to be doing, yeah. how I need to be doing it to expose my kids to faith, helping them not be biblically illiterate. Yep. Um, and, and even just what does it mean to love God and love our neighbor? And, uh, and, and, and if we love him, we obey his commands. Those Come kind on. of basic principle practices, I, I think some can oftentimes when we sit down at the kitchen table and try to like work it out mm -hmm. of going, man, between all the other things of being a parent, how do we start in this? And so yeah. I think I think the church has an, a real great opportunity because it's who God is of bringing clarity to what he calls his people to. Call them I mean, to do, yeah. Yeah, dude. And there's never confusion. You look all through scripture, man, God is so clear to his people of what it means to follow him, whether yep, it's, you know what I mean? Yep. In the Old Testament, there's just direct 
um, you know, how to follow him. Here's, here's what to do at, at the time to do it, all of these type of things. And even into, even into the, uh, the new Testament, the way that Jesus teaches and, and how you see him interact with folks, right? The, yeah. uh, the, the rich young ruler always comes to mind, even though the end of that story to me is a very sad thing of him kind of walking, walking away. away. Yeah. Um, but you know, the rich young ruler comes to Jesus and asks, you know, what do I do to in, uh, inherit eternal life? And and what's funny uh, is that guy that would, if he came into a church like that, and he's like, "Hey, what do I got to like within, you know, we got to make this dude a deacon." And yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so you know, it, but Jesus takes it a different different way yeah. there. Um, but yeah, it yeah. Well, it is part of knowing his heart too. Like you Come get on. to see, you get to see Jesus meet this guy where he's at of understanding of you know law and everything these follow because this guy looks at it and he goes yeah done all these things right yeah. and and jesus is like well you know uh sell everything come follow me i mean he invites him to be one of his boys yeah and uh and it's it's one of the the few cases that we do see in the new testament where somebody walks away now i i pray and i hope for that man's soul that Later down the um, line, there was something right. different. We, yeah, we never amen. know, right? We don't know. Um, Eternity will tell. But uh, the the opportunity there to to come and follow him, and, and I think I think for for us, part of it um, is is giving some clarity to people of what we're asking when we when we say words like discipleship and what what does that entail. Yeah. Uh, but then I also think there's there's a side of it too is for. For church leaders, and I'm not just talking about the pastor, but the, those that would would find themselves in authority inside the church, um, that there is that calling mm. to to live it right. There, well, the scripture would talk about that higher standard, and I, I think I think we as ministers, I, I think not not airing out the dirty laundry, sure, but just I mean being authentic. Being authentic, and, yeah. I mean, Being willing to be vulnerable to some degree, and 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 this is the wild thing in my in my church is that I I'm trying to help our people understand. I'm no different than any other person. I, I'm not any different. I am prone to sin. I am prone yeah. to struggles. Yeah. But here's the the thing that's different is that I'm trying to be the shepherd and the leader of of this group yeah. and i have to i have to dedicate myself to the study of god's word and right. because of that dedication the word is the thing that gets the glory god god gets the glory because the weight of the word is pressing down on me so i'm i'm pushing that sure. out to our people saying here's what the word of god says and how we can transform our communities yeah. how our, and, and our communities transform when individuals hearts transform right right well, and, and, so, and you yourself, right? I mean, if if you're a pastor going, man, we we I want you to bring a friend, you know what I mean? Like, how many times right. have you heard that? And and then yet, yeah, I think the question is always to ask of like, okay, well, when, when was the last time that you brought a neighbor? Right? Like, we, are your people seeing that in you? You know, if you're if you're telling them to go go evangelize, go you know, share the yep. gospel, like we, we should also be juggling a little bit of that. Like, well, I got to go speak, but Come here's on. my buddy, here's my buddy, Tony, you know what I mean? <laughs> and and I think that, uh, I think the opportunity like you're talking about, um, like it's so what the thing that's wild is the, like this week, um, I, I was in my office and I had one of our Sunday school teachers come in and grab me and she was, she pulled me in and, and, and they had just got to lead a young lady to the Lord. And, and they were just like, they were so like, they were on drugs or something. They were so mm -hmm. excited. They were like, this is awesome. And I was like, yeah. I know. Right. Yeah. And so if I wasn't trying to evangelize people and I wasn't trying to share the gospel, but I'm telling my people, Hey, you need to go do these things, right. but I'm not doing it. That's, right. That's weird, but because sure. that's just that my natural bent is I want to see people transformed by the power of the gospel. My people in my church, they now have a heart for that. I, in fact, I got a text message this week from a lady saying, just love how our church is is so mission minded now as, yeah. as it really wasn't in the past, and but now it is. And so it's got this mindset. So, um, well, again, yeah. I, you know, I, I know that your your podcast, you're wanting to talk about leadership. I mean, to to even take those kind of 
those elements into that like leadership conversation. I mean, let's take it away from even evangelism, yeah. but just the, you know, things like joy. Okay. I, cause I, I don't, I don't hear joy talked about a lot in, in just leadership uh, circles, but I think it's very prevalent, even in secular cultures. I mean, we want to build organizations and companies that people enjoy working at. Right. Right. Exactly. And that they, they want to be, don't there. make church a drudgery. Right. <laughs> right. But, but for us, like if, if you're going to do that, it's, it starts with uh, leadership. I mean, it starts with the person at top, like you've, you've got to not only set directives, but yep. you've got to allow it to like penetrate your own mar- heart and mind that it had yep. become something uh, that you are and that you lead with, uh, yeah. because man, pe- people follow that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like the vast majority of people are wanting to do a great job wherever they're at and, um, and, and grow. Mom. And, but for, for so many people, it's, you know, it can become so convoluted yes. in, in our own mind that it's like, man, I don't know where to start or what, what to do. And we over, start overthinking all of these kind of things. Well, you're um, right. Instead of just allowing kind of the authenticity of who you are to live through. And sometimes that takes some real self examination of going, man, why am I so bitter? You know oh, what I mean? Oh. Like, what? Why am I, uh, why am I, you know, why do I allow these things to to control my life? Yeah. Control me, yes. right? And, and these kind of things. Let's let's jump gears. I just got a couple minutes left here. So what yeah, yeah. um what what's fun things are you planning out this summer? Oh well, so uh, our, our our summertime uh, it, for us travel slows down a little bit during the summertime, yeah. right? Um, for for many churches, um they become very busy yep. and your people Camp. are traveling that kind of stuff. So tra- training side, we, we kind of flip. We're yeah. the opposite of the church. If that makes sense. A lot of times, cause we're trying to serve you all well. And, um, and so, man, I, I get to spend a little bit more time with family. That awesome. kind of deal. Um, I've been trying to fish more. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get into that a little bit more. I'm really enjoying it. I have found that there's just something peaceful. It really about is. You yep. getting out there. And even if you don't catch anything, you're just kind of out there. And um, I, man, being a guy who is in podcast world and all of that kind of deal, I've actually even tried to go out there without any headphones and Mom. just be there just be away from all the screens and all the distractions yes Yes. um because man even as much as i try i have just realized more and more over the last few years of how how addicting that thing can be even even dude and even when it's not done poorly like it is just a dopamine machine of social media and text and connecting and feed and not even like the bad part of just like, oh, I got to get this done and this done. Mm-hmm. And there's my calendar and my emails and yep. and all of those kind of things. And and the reminder for myself that, man, there's going to be more work tomorrow and there's going to be more work the next day. Yep. And all of those kind of things. It'll be there. It'll it is, be there. man. And, and, and that's the thing. It's like trying to control that and to create peace in my own life because- yep. You know, I once again, I, I want not only the people on my team to function in a way that's healthy and um, and and really Christ focused. Because I, I mean, we see Him, right? Like G- Jesus is plentiful all through the New Testament of pulling away. You know what I mean? And going and praying and. Yep. If we think we're going to be leaders that can somehow do that and Jesus couldn't, we are mistaken. We're we are we are sadly mistaken. Uh, well, amen. we're we're leading by the wrong power is Come what on. we're trying to do. Preach it, brother. Uh, Preach it. Yes. And, and, and so I I think being being men um, that understand the power that is in rest and Sabbath, mm. um, and 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 being men that trust 
God to provide. Yeah. Um, yep. And, and, and so, yeah, I, I, I want to, to work more and more on that and, and be that not only in a work environment, but at home and those kind of things. And love it. And That's I fantastic. want to catch, and I want to catch a really big bass. You need big bass. If I'm just, <laughs> if I'm like just going to be honest, trophy you know? that thing on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how my wife would feel about dead animals. She'd be on fine. The wall. She'd, she'd be, be fine. We, we'll put it in one of the other rooms. Yeah, so. she'd be fine. She'd be fine. Well, that's fantastic. Well, brother, yeah. I appreciate you taking time to talk to us today and just to share your heart for what you're doing. Uh, it has been good to catch up and just make this connection again. And uh, next time you're through Beeville, man, we got to go get I coffee. Will. I will love it, brother. Great to see you. Blessings. Blessings, brother.